Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. We're gonna have some fun today and if you're new here, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Now the title of this video is probably already given it away, but I will be painting on a brown paper bag. I heard it could be done, and yes it can. I'll be creating these two paintings, this floral and a landscape, and showing you how and what products to use for this technique. Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and this is Jackson, and I'm holding him because he keeps interrupting me while I'm trying to make this intro. So, Jackson, are you happy now? You're a star. I love you. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So today we're going to do something that I had literally never tried before until just a few weeks ago. You know, if you've watched this channel very much, I love finding new ways to do things, but I also love finding affordable ways to create pastel paintings because the products can get expensive. Now, if you're going to scrimp on something I um, financially, I would say the paper would be better than the pastels. It really does make such a difference, the, the quality pastels. I wouldn't get the cheap um, student grade pastels at an art supply store. Usually they're at like Michael's and Joann's, nothing against those stores, but um, that's usually where you find the cheaper versions of pastels. But with pastel papers often, especially when we're learning and practicing, we can find cheaper alternatives. That's why I have so many videos on how to create your own pastel surface. Well. I was excited when I saw, or I was actually puzzled more than excited at first, when I saw the comment of one of my subscribers here on this YouTube channel, and he said, did you know you could paint with pastels on a brown paper bag? Like, quite well, you know, it works great. And of course, you know I had to try that. So sure enough, I went and got a brown paper bag, like a regular paper bag, and I decided to give it a try. So I did two, I've done two paintings on brown paper bags over the past few weeks. This one is, was for a Patreon lesson on my Patreon page. And this is literally just on brown craft paper. Okay, I had some um, like brown craft paper you wrap packages with. And this one was done on a brown paper bag. Now with this one, I did apply some of my homemade surface to give it more grit and more texture that I've had in a past few videos, but I'll talk about that more. But on this one, I did this one first. On this one, I was like, you know what? Can I do it just right on the bag without anything added to it? And sure enough, I could, and it worked quite well. Now that's exciting for me because when you do a lot of lessons, that could get really expensive. If I was using the expensive pastel papers, you art, pastel mat, um, and, and many others, so this is really practical and a nice option for me. Now, I know I, I call them the archival police. <laughs> archival just means acid free. And God bless you. I know we really do need to use quality art products, especially if you're showing your piece um, or in a gallery or you're selling your piece. You want to guarantee that that product, your final um, piece, is going to not yellow over time. That's pretty much what archival means. You want it to be an acid-free product, um, especially with your papers um, that won't yellow over time. So because I, I did some research on paper, paper bags and um, I don't think paper bags are acid-free. So that would not be good. Find to practice on, okay? I found I threw away a lot of my beginning work. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, if you want an acid-free product, if you find you like this, play around on some paper bags. I did find a company, the owner, I don't know if he's the owner or not, but he was so great. He sent me some rolls. I sent him some of my artwork. I told him I needed an acid-free, um, like a brown craft paper product. And the name of the company is Brico. And he sent me, I've got another one down here. He sent me these two rolls. Well, actually, he sent me four rolls of, of these uh, rolls of brown paper that I'm gonna do some examples on right now. It is acid free, so this should be fun. And I just thank the company for sending me this because it not only helps me for painting, I'm also going to be using this, you know, to package up some of my artwork um, from my Etsy shop. Sometimes paintings are large and I need a big roll of like this brown, well, it's like packaging paper or pastel paper now. So. Join me as I create some artwork on brown paper bags, basically. All right, here we go. 
I'll be providing clickable links to the two products that I received, the 24 inch by 175 feet and a 36 inch roll by 100 feet. And I'll also have a coupon code that you can use to get 15% off. This paper is great for so many different purposes and it's also quite reasonably priced. Now, here I am with my uh, craft paper from Bryco up on my board. I'm going to, um, actually, I do something, I call it reference photo roulette. I literally just grab reference photos and, and go for it and just decide to paint something. And it's a good idea because have you ever um, taken so much time, you get the urge to paint, and you end up taking hours to find a reference photo because you want to find that perfect one. Well, this is a neat way to get past that and realize not every work has to be a serious work. And a lot of times we need to spend more time painting. Well, always we need to spend more time painting than looking for the perfect reference photo. So what I do is I have a, a folder, I actually have a box too, where I keep reference photos and I cut them all up. You'll see, I, I pulled a few out. Um, I pulled like four of them out of the reference photo uh, folder. And so I'm just gonna pick some of these and start painting and show you how this brown paper receives the pastels. All right, so what do you guys think? Which one should I do first? Oh, I took that picture of that little raccoon. He's so cute. Oh, that's a picture of a field out at my mom's house. There's a cool tree. Uh, I just did a tree video, so. Let, oh, and there's some poppies. Uh, let, me, let me do these poppies first. How about that? All right, so it's a vertical format. So this is my quick little way to just um, get a, um, a frame in for whatever you're painting. So I'm just, I've got a pastel pencil. Uh, do I wanna do it? Let's do it, let's do it larger. I'm gonna have a mark on it. Let's do an eight by 10. Inside of this is a five by seven. This is the way most mats are. If you buy something that's a, for a five by seven picture, often the outside dimensions are gonna be eight by 10. So there's my eight by 10. And let's play around with these poppies. So I'm just gonna paint. Uh, this is more about just showing you how the paper receives the pastels. Also, I'm using my Unison 120 half stick set that I've been talking about like crazy lately because it's just a, such a great set for me when I'm teaching that I don't have to get up and go pick a bunch of pastels. There's great choices for just about every painting. All right, so here we go. The reference photo that I'm using is from pmp-art.com and I can't really share the photo other than, you know, the small image that you see on the side of my easel here, but I will provide a clickable link in the about section of this video. Now, I am using a pastel pencil here just to block in some of the larger shaped flowers. Uh, I am also going to be blocking in some darks around it as you can see how I start it. And basically I have only sped this up very slightly right now and I'm going to talk through some of the beginning part of this painting demonstration and then I'll put the rest to music. But mostly I wanted to talk about in this video of course how the paper is receiving the pastels and I was once again pleasantly surprised at the results that I was able to achieve. Now I'm using a little piece of chamois cloth here as a blending tool. I've been using chamois cloth now for oh gosh um, not quite a year but I discovered it that on certain papers it's a great little blending tool. I'm basically just covering up a lot of that brown surface there. And if you've been exploring pastels for very long, you probably realize that one of the things we like to be able to get as we paint is layering capability. We want to be able to layer a pastel on top of another pastel without it. Um, if you add too many layers and it's not receiving anymore, they get kind of slick. You literally can't even get another color on top of a color. And also they just don't have the vibrancy. They start kind of turning to mud if you can't get much layering. Now, I will admit I've gotten more fond of working on unsanded pastel papers like this. This doesn't have any added grit. It's not like a sandpaper, like a UART paper. And I haven't added any texture to it to create a sandy, gritty surface. But I have started liking unsanded papers like this paper, 
Uh, also like the regular Canson papers. There's another product made by Canson called Canson Touch and it does, they added a little bit of sanded um, sandiness to it or grit to it to get a little bit more layering. But I've, I think I've learned to keep a lighter touch and so I'm able to get more layering now as my art career has progressed. Uh, basically just because of my technique. I'm not as heavy-handed. I think as we paint, we get a little bit more uh, strategic about where we place our strokes so we don't have to do as much correcting. So often when you work on an unsanded paper, as a beginner artist, you might get a little frustrated because you don't get as much layering as you do on UART or pastel matte. But again, I actually got more layering than I would have thought on a brown paper bag. You'll see as I progress here, uh, I'm already starting to add some layers on top of um, the uh, darker colors that I've already put down for the flowers. And by the way, I typically, or in pastel painting, the typical um, procedure or technique is to work dark to light. A lot of times we lay down our darkest value first and we lay the lights down on top, which is why I got a lot of the darker shadowy areas. Even though the flowers in the photo are very light, I don't add those brightest highlights until the very end. So hopefully you're able to see enough here. I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little more. You won't be able to see the reference photo, but uh, now I'm starting to add some of the lighter um, values on top. And once again, this unison set that I have, I found it so practical because it has all of its pastel colors arranged by value. So if you need some um, salmon-y colors like I have here, they have them uh, arranged from the darkest value to the lightest value. So you can literally work dark to light just right there from how they have it laid out in the set. Now on some of the undersides of the um, poppies, I am putting some blues and purples because it's kind of a shadowy side. Even though the petal is the same white or light pink, whatever it is in the sunshine, it's not going to appear that way on the petals that are turned down or are more in shadow. That's why you see me sometimes using some of the lavenders or blues, and it gives it a lot more interest and pizzazz. All right, let me zoom in so you can see a little bit more how I'm working. As you might can see better here, I'm doing more layering. Um, also, there's some more of that uh, almost a periwinkle blue color, again, on the shadowy sides of the poppies. And I've got the dark blocked in in the background, and in the photo, it Sometimes you'll see a sky behind them, but in this case there was like maybe a forest or something else that was a very dark value in the upper right hand distance. So I wanted to kind of keep it true to the photo and establish that. So I, I played around with the composition a little bit. I didn't like how that the flower that I'm working on right now in the reference image, it was out of the photo. It was kind of like um, halfway in and halfway out. So I moved it in a little bit which calls for me having to work from imagination a little bit. And uh, I'm, I'd say I'm okay at doing flowers for my imagination, but I'm not like an expert, um, like some people who do poppies all the time. But uh, I also decided to add one up higher to give it more height and interest, kind of pulling the eye in and around to make the composition a little bit more interesting. And uh, you'll see as I work, I, I kind of get the flowers established the way I want them, and then I go in and start working on the background. I'm getting a kind of a dark center in just a couple. I don't want to do it in all of them because the petals aren't arranged in a way to do that, but uh, I thought that would give a little bit of interest. And uh, on some of them, I'm even giving a little bit of a darker purplish blue to them. So I'm going to work here for a while, uh, add some music. I hope you guys will like this video. It really helps when you like the video, when you make comments, of course, subscribe. And um, also too, be sure to click the link if you're interested in this paper and use that coupon for 15% off. So I am gonna speed it up a little bit more at this point in order to um, not have the video so long. And I have a second painting coming after this one. So enjoy to the music and I hope you're seeing how I'm actually able to get quite a bit of layering on this brown paper.
at this stage you can see I've gotten quite a bit of layering on the flowers I've gotten the dark background established adding some grasses multiple dark values that I used in the background color there and now I'm adding the highlights on the grasses and even some more on the flowers and see I'm still getting a decent amount of layering so I really am impressed with this and I'm also going to after I finish the next painting I'm really going to speed that one up just so you can see me do a landscape painting on this particular paper but after I get done with that painting I spray both of them I'm still in this experimental phase with this stuff I spray both of them with some workable fixative often I like to try to get a little bit of a darker value in the foreground and I kind of wanted to bury that flower I was working on right there the lower left flower and I was once again pleasantly surprised that the workable fixative uh, was successful and now I'm going to start the next painting this reference image is of a field that's at my parents home in Live Oak Florida and they are so blessed to live on this property where they get the most amazing sunsets now the photo is pretty dark but I use my artistic license to lighten some of the values and intensify some of the colors and once again I'm starting with the darks I've got a dark kind of navy blue a deeper brownish and then a burgundy color and I'm using my little chamois cloth really just to fill in some of the blank um, you know background color of the brown paper and then I use the same strategy of typically working dark to light with my layering and if you haven't seen my video five ways to achieve depth in your artwork I've gotten some great feedback on that video and I think it's because once you understand the rules of how to make a three-dimensional world appear as three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface then it makes it so much easier so check that video out if you haven't because those five steps is really what I use all the time when I'm painting they just the more you do it the easier it becomes now for me in this reference image the focal point was definitely the clouds and I loved how the clouds were just reaching up uh, moving towards the viewer and reaching up into the heavens with a real dramatic flare and often too as I'm working on some of these brighter colors also that sunset or whatever the lighting was right back in that little area behind the trees was also a dramatic effect and just so you know I typically even though we have a tendency to see that and go oh it's a sunset let me get the lightest color that I can get I've learned over the years that you actually can get intense colors rather than super light values so I didn't go for my lightest value in that sunset I went for some of the um, almost a reddish orangey color and then more of an orangey red and then I can kind of layer over top of them to settle them down a little bit or, or take the intensity away and one of the most common questions that I get or a very common question I get is how do you know what colors to um, change to you know if the reference photo doesn't show that how did you know to pick that color and once again to refer back to that video uh, and and my video is not like something new I'm literally just regurgitating all of the things that I've learned and try to put them together in a concise way um, here's where I'm kind of lightening or taking the intensity away from some of those oranges that I put down but anyway so um, once you learn the rules you can get bolder with color or make new color decisions that aren't necessarily in the photo I know that the the green that I put down in the distant field back there I know that things are going to lighten up back there because value gets lighter in the distance I also know it's going to be lighter in that background field because there's a sun setting and there's going to be some reflected light coming down from there and so I, I talk a lot in my videos about how I'm a why person and I think when we ask those questions why is this happening we remember it and we can use it uh, more effectively as artists now I'm almost done here with this painting before I add the fixative so you just got a few more seconds to watch of this so I'm going to add some music but hang in there because in a minute you're going to see me add 
the workable fixative to both paintings and see what results I get. Okay, so I am seriously impressed by the amount of layering that I'm achieving on just this brown paper from Brico. And also too, Unison pastels, the majority of what I've used, they're pretty soft pastels. So a lot of times with the softer pastels, you don't get a lot of layering anyway. So that's quite impressive. Now for the trick, I am going to try uh, I wanted these flowers right here to be a little bit more buried and often when I'm working on other surfaces I can um, give a little spray of some fixative which will give me a little extra grit and I can layer over top of it. I wanted to add some more grasses but I kind of wanted to darken this. It's more in the foreground. It should be darker and it's buried. So I'm going to spray it with fixative and see what happens. I have an eye. I'll spray it down here first and I would like to spray a little fixative down here to layer some of these uh, grasses in the field. I know this is photo is little, you can't see it. So I'm gonna try it with the uh, fixative that I normally use and uh, see what happens. Here we go. All right, ooh, I can tell I need more of this uh, fixative. The can's feeling a little light. Um, this stuff works great, but I already know the paper is probably going to curl uh, because I did try some of this on a different paper, not this particular paper. But uh, let's spray it down here and just see what happens. A little light coat. I've moved my pastels, by the way. If you ever have fix it out of your spray, move anything that you don't want to get that film on. Also, being a pretty ventilated place, I'm not going to spray much of it, and I'll walk out of the room after I do. But uh, here's what it'll do down here. Let me see. Uh, I said I would walk out, but... Okay, let's let that dry. Ooh, I am smelling it. Well, it's pretty dry and you can see it definitely darkens it, which is one of the things I wanted to do. I don't feel a lot of texture to it, but you know, I might be pleasantly surprised. So let's try this one first. I want this area down here a little darker. I want it kind of to feel rooted and have these flowers be the lighter flowers. And I purposely, I like the little, uh, the little um, spots almost that you get. I think it looks uh, really kind of artistic when you get the little um, drips and spots around. All right, so now I'm gonna do this one. And it did darken it. I mean, even if I'm not able to layer much, I think that helped it to, to make that feel like it's more down in the depths of the grasses. All right, so let's do this. Now, this is pretty dark already, but I want it to glaze a little bit of, there is a rich kind of green. I put some of these pinks in here. So uh, let me let me get a little bit of this down here, especially in the foreground. If you use this technique, remember, don't get this too far into the distance because that's gonna mess up the way value normally works anyway. All right, let's let that dry. I worked on these a bit more after applying the fixative. Again, very happy with the results. I was able to get it a bit darker and a little bit more layering. Here it is in the final um, view where you can see the whole painting. And also the same thing with the field painting. Also too, a, a tip, convert your photo to black and white if you want to check the values or your painting to black and white. And you can see if the crazy colors you used actually worked. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for hanging in there with all of my crazy experiments. And if you want to check out how to use pastels with brown paper, be sure to click the links in the about section of this video. All right, guys, happy painting.